Hey guys, Pastor Jason here, lead pastor of the Lakeside Church. I'm back for day nine of our 15 days of prayer. Isn't that incredible how quickly time passes by? It feels like we kind of just started these 15 days of prayer. We're already in day nine. And I pray that your faith is being strengthened every single day. I pray that every day that you listen to God's word and you spend time in prayer, that your heart is at peace, your mind is at peace. I pray that you can rest in the middle of the storm. I mean, keep in mind that Jesus slept through storms. And so I'm praying that that same peace that Jesus has, you and I can have. And so today I'm excited because I'm talking about the heart, the heart. And obviously when, I, when I'm saying the heart, I'm not talking about the organ, the physical organ in your body that pumps blood all throughout your body. I'm talking about in a spiritual context, the Bible talks about the heart. And when the Bible talks about the heart, it's talking about your, your emotions, your will, your desires. And this is a season in crisis where if you're not prayed up and you're not in the presence of God and you're not spending time in God's word, your emotions are gonna get the best of you. In fact, some of you may be watching right now and you're like, Pastor, my emotions got the best of me like today. Like I woke up today super stressed out or super anxious or I, I just, my, my mind's running all over the place and emotionally, I just feel like I'm falling apart. Well, good news, I got scripture for you today and we're gonna pray and we're gonna get your heart in check in Jesus' name. So I wanna go to a bunch of different places, so let's go there real quick. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse one, listen to what Jesus says. This is typically a passage that we read at a funeral, a celebration of life service, something like that, but I'm telling you, this passage is applicable to any situation. Jesus said, John 14, verse one, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, one, Jesus says, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your emotions get the best of you. Do, do not let your emotions run your life. Get your heart together. And maybe you're watching this and you're like, well, pastor, that, that sounds real great. Um, I appreciate you telling me to get my heart together, but, but I can't. Can I tell you something real quick? If you're born again, if you're a Christian, right? If Christ lives on the inside of you, if the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you, let me tell you one thing that I know about God. God would never ask you to do anything that he would not supernaturally give you the power and the ability to do. It would be cruel of God to ask you to do something that you could not do. When we first started the 15 days of prayer, I think it was day one, we talked about Philippians chapter four, where the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Now, if we don't have the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome anxiety, it's a cruel thing for God to tell us not to be anxious. But how many know we do have the power and the ability through the Holy Spirit to overcome anxiety and to also, John chapter 14, to keep our hearts in check. And that is your responsibility. I know it's easier just to blame everybody else for the, for the reason why you feel the way you feel. That's typically what we do. You know, we look for external things or, or people. We want to blame everybody else for the way we're feeling. But I'm telling you, quit allowing other people to dictate the way you feel. Oh man, I'm feeling good today. I feel, I feel a little preach on me this morning. Don't allow other situations and other people to dictate your heart and the way you feel and the way you think and your emotions. And how's that possible? Right here, John chapter 14, verse one. Jesus said, don't let it happen. Don't let your heart be troubled. Well, how? How do I overcome that? Well, do you believe in God? He says, you believe in God, believe also in me. So let me show you another scripture right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. This is the apostle Paul. And he says, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, listen to these words, we do not lose heart. The apostle Paul says, we don't lose heart. Jesus is telling us, don't lose heart. The apostle Paul is saying, good news, we don't lose heart. Now, if anybody dealt with adversity, it was the Apostle Paul. We're dealing with coronavirus, and it's bad. I mean, it's definitely bad. It's impacting everything we do. But I will tell you that if you look at the life of the Apostle Paul, he dealt with things that we will never deal with. He was stoned. He was beaten and left for dead. He was shipwrecked. 
He was bit by a venomous snake. He, I mean, he dealt with incredible things. He was in prison for preaching the gospel. And yet it was the apostle Paul who said, we don't lose heart. Now we deal with adversity, but we don't lose heart. We deal with obstacles, but we don't lose heart. Things don't always go our way, but we don't lose heart. There's something that the apostle Paul knows that you and I need to know today. And when you get to verse uh, eight, one of my favorite texts, he says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet we are not crushed. We are perplexed. Sometimes we have some questions we don't understand, but we are never in despair. We are persecuted, but God has never forsaken us. Sometimes we get struck down, but we are not destroyed. Man, I'm telling you, this is a verse for every single person who's watching today. And then you get down all the way to verse 16. And he says, therefore, in light of everything that I've already explained, he says, again, we do not lose heart. He says, even though our outward man, our physical man is perishing, our inward man is being renewed every single day. Here's what the apostle Paul said. As, as we get older, our bodies are breaking down. Like these bodies were not meant to live forever, but you have a spirit that is the real part of who you are. And that's the part that's eternal. That's the part that's going to live forever. These bodies begin to break down. I, man, I'm over that 40 threshold now, and I am struggling to see the text when I'm looking at a computer. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm going to have good eyes in Jesus' name. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, I'm getting older. I'm getting older, and, and these things start to go, right? And th this is what the Apostle Paul is talking about, that outwardly the body begins to break down, but inwardly, in our spirit, our emotions, our heart, our personality, our will, our desire, that that part of us is getting better every single day. It's getting stronger. It's getting more confident. It's getting filled with more faith, more hope, more love, more peace. That's the part of us that even coronavirus can't stop that. Uh, anxiety can't stop that. Stress can't stop that. People can't stop that. Let me tell you something. There is a peace that comes from the very presence of God. It cannot be stopped. So I pray to God you're encouraged today. Don't let your heart be troubled. You don't let it, right? Pray. Get into God's word. Get God's word into your heart. Focus on that. Spend time in the presence of God. You're going to walk in divine peace. One last verse of scripture before I pray. Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. Again, the Bible says, protect your heart, guard your heart for out of it springs all the issues of life. I'm telling you, if you can get your heart right, you can get everything else right. If you can get your heart right, you can get your mind right. If you can get your heart right, you can have peace in the middle of the storm. And that's why the Bible says, guard your heart. Let's pray right now. I love you guys so much. Thank you for, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in to the to day, I think it's day nine, 15 days of prayer. I want to pray for you right now. Father God, thank you that you give us the ability to control the way we feel and to control our emotions. Thank you, God, that we're not at the mercy of our emotions, that we don't have to give in to fear. We don't have to give in to doubt and worry and grief and depression and stress and anxiety. We don't have to just allow those thoughts and feelings to dominate our day and to dominate the way we think. Thank you, God, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you have given us the ability to grab our emotions and to keep them in check, God. And we do it as we keep our minds set on you and we keep our heart focused on you. God, I pray for every single person who's watching today that you would help them, teach them, God, how to guard their heart, how to not let their heart be troubled, how to be able to declare like the Apostle Paul, you know what? We don't lose heart in Jesus' name. Why? Because we serve a God who cannot fail. We serve a God who is with us right now, who promised he would never leave us. And our God is a promise keeper. If he says it, he will do it, God. Thank you, Father, for your presence today. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus and God's people said, amen. We pray you were encouraged today. As always, we'd love for you to connect with us, amen. Especially if you're new and you don't know who we are, visit thelakeside.church. 
There's a uh, button right there that says connect with us. You fill out that card. We'd love to hear your praise report, what God's doing in your life. Or if you have a prayer request, let us know that also. We'd love the opportunity to pray with you. Have a blessed day and we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place.